someone lost their hope there's someone here that needs some hope somebody some deacons need some hope some urchers need some hope some single need some hope some young people need hope some marriages need hope but I come to let you know today that the themes surrounding the birth of Jesus Around Jesus' birth, his whole life saw him up to be the word hope. I don't care what wicked king may sit on the throne. I don't care what wicked president come. Listen, don't miss it. God always deliver his people. Let's listen at these comforting words of Isaiah, the seventh chapter. 13 and the 14th verse. I'll be reading out the New Living Translation. It says, Then Isaiah said, Listen well, you raw family of David. Isn't it not enough to exalt human patience? Must you exalt the patience of my God as well? All right then, the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, a virgin will conceive a child. She will birth a son into this world and will call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This is the word of God that it may comfort the people of God. Ain't God all right? Let us pray. Great and gracious God, we are honored to be in your presence today. We thank you that early this morning you touched us with your finger of love. And we realize that if nothing we did that we deserve it, but, but your grace is sufficient. Your joy is unspeakable. Your mercy is new every morning. And your peace is perfect every day. God, we say thank you. Thank you for being uh, with us and bringing us through another day. Thank you for carrying us through what we thought that we couldn't make it through. Lord, we thank you for the things that could have happened that did not happen. Thank you for the angel that you dismissed on 
last night, all night and all day, angels was watching over us. God, we thank you for those who's on the scene that, that's in the sanctuary worshiping. But we also thank those that's on the screen who watching online. Someone in here need a miracle, oh, oh Father. They need it right now today. They just didn't come to church to show out they hadn't. But they come to, cause they're in a desperate need of a blessing. Let them know, oh Father, that you are, some of them is at the end of the rope, but you'll meet them right there. Somebody is just about to give up, but God, you gonna show up. Now, Lord, uh, somebody just can't take it no more. Let them know you'll be right there. Now, God, uh, just in case it's our neighbor, we want our neighbor to know we praying for him. Bless our neighbor that's on our right, our neighbor that's on our left. If they need healing, heal them. If they need forgiving, forgive them. Now, God, we need a word from you today. We didn't hear it from Instagram. We didn't hear it from YouTube. We didn't hear it from CBS. We didn't hear it from CEN. But now we need to hear a word from you. Oh, God bless our pastor as he come to speak from your word. Do business, oh, Lord, in our hearts and do business in our soul. Do business in our everyday life. Now, God, we don't know how long the deliverer will be. But while we wait on you, Father, strengthen these old bodies. Strengthen these old minds, oh, Father. We pray this prayer in no other name that matters. But in Jesus' name. The one who still turn water into wine. The one who still can walk on water. In Jesus' name we pray that all the people of God say, Amen. How many of you have decided to make Jesus your choice? When you think about all of the decisions you've made in your life, what you were going to put on, where you were going to live, where you were going to go to school, where you were going to work, who you were going to date, who you are going to marry, what your child's name would be. All of these are decisions you made. But let me let you know the biggest decision you'll ever make in your life is when you decide to give your life over to God. And there's no way to get to the Father but through the Son, which is Jesus Christ our Lord. That song now took me back. I remember listening to that song as a young child sitting in Forest Lawn Missionary Baptist Church. And it resonates in my mind even on today that when it comes down to the decision of your soul, it is the greatest decision you'll make in your existence where you will dwell forever. Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ our Lord who do all things well. Amen. Amen. Let us thank God for these singers, these musicians who have given us inspiration through song that we might be endowed with the Spirit of God through praise from our lips. Amen. Um, on today, um, we're going to continue in this Advent season. We've already looked at the gift of love, determined by God's love of giving us Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. But last week, we looked at the peace, the gift of peace that was given through the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, our Lord, where we have peace with God, peace with ourselves, peace with others, and peace in our circumstances. Today, if you would, indulge me for a few minutes as we look at the gift of hope. Let us look at the gift of hope. Amen? Um, I don't know about you, but in this life, as hard as it is, it seems like we are losing all hope. Um, but today, if you would, turn with me on your Bibles to Ephesians, the second chapter. And 
And let us look at verses 10 through 13. And the word of God reads, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at a time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Today, I just want to look at the gift of hope. You may be seated. The gift of hope. You know, as I open up the pages of the Bible and I read, I realize that the Bible is not light reading. It is not a casual book that you just read and it has no effect on you. For every time I open up scripture, I'm forced to pull a mirror and put before my very face it examines me, it convicts me, it encourages me, it corrects me. It, it does a work within my mind and heart that cannot really be explained by words. But if I have one or two Bible readers, you will testify that the word of God is truly a spirit. It is a living document that seems to penetrate what seems to be impenetrable, which is our heart and minds. Stay with me if you would for a minute because many of us do not read the word of God because what might happen is we might discover we not all that we think we are. We, we might discover that we really not the victims, that, that, that truly the, the matter of the fact is that we are those that God has plucked out of the muck and mire of life and have given us an opportunity to live a life more abundantly. This is evidence through his love and his peace that he's guaranteed. But many of us, because of life's ails and the things that go on in the world, we begin to throw pity parties and look at ourselves as if we do not deserve the joy that is guaranteed through the newness of life in Jesus Christ. And we get so preoccupied with the rat race of life and all of its trappings that many times we bind ourselves in our past and our regrets and our doubts and our fears failing to realize that greater is he that is in us that is in the world that at one time we were afar off from God because of the penalty of death, sin and the grave but now through Jesus Christ our Lord the one that we will be celebrating the one that was born in a manger that one that was gift wrapped in milk rags or swaddling clothes this very same same baby is the one that one day some 33 years later would give his life shed his blood that we might have reconciliation with God we might be restored and that we might experience the resurrection this is my hope today that this resurrection, this reconciliation, this restoration will be made evident not only as I live on this side, but oh, what a day when that great getting up morning that all of us who have shed off this corruptible will put on incorruption. Those of us who have shed mortality and put on immortality that we might live with God forever. In spite of reading this book, I, I, I read the book and as I read it, I see this uh, eclectic cast of thousands of individuals as God unfolds this narrative full of brutal 
murder, sordid sexual stories, manipulation, um, um, extortion. We, we look at the Bible and we find all types of issues, whether they are family issues, freeing issues, enemies. We see all of these things played out right in the Holy Scriptures and these things were written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that we ourselves might have inspiration of God and his word of truth showing us how we can live before God in peace and be able to experience the victory associated with being an overcomer of this world. Many of us don't understand that, that, that he puts these things in the Bible so that when you read Romans 3 and 23 that says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God that you won't take your pen and put a Y in front of all and say y'all have sinned and come short. You, you can really stand and say I have sinned and come short. That, that's why in our prayer life many of us go to God merely with petitions that we might receive of him these manifestations of, of tangible blessings, things we can see and touch and feel. But the truth is, when you mature in the word of God, you realize as the song just sung that, that there are some people that would rather have houses and land and silver and gold but, but these things don't compare to the things that God is able to give me relative to my soul. God is able to give me peace. God is able to give me hope. God is able to give me joy. God is able to give me a fighting spirit that I'm willing to stand even under the hand of persecution being ridiculed and talked about, laughed at, but I'm willing to stand on the precious promises of God knowing that he will permit me to stand and be all that he's created to me to be. Listen, to all that God has allowed me to live through and come through and come over and get around and climb under God made a way out of no way. He, he took me me right as I was in a miserable state on my way to a burning hell and in spite of me he still loved me and didn't treat me as my sins deserve that's why when I read the scripture it gives me joy in my heart it puts clapping in my hands running in my feet tears begin to fall from my face then I read that what I sow in tears that one day I shall reap in joy let me help somebody that's going through bereavement go on show them tears you gonna reap enjoy somebody who relationship is on the fringe of breaking up and you're hurting and you're in despair you've given everything and seems like you've received nothing in return keep on crying because as you sow those tears he guaranteed you're gonna reap some joy I'm glad to report today that, that it could have been even worse God did not have to put in a system by which we can be reconciled to him. The first thing we receive with this gift of joy is reconciliation. Book of Genesis lets us know that we through Adam had sinned against God by disobeying a commandment. And as we began to live, we recognized that we were born in sin. We were shaped in iniquity. You, you came like this. This is how you were packaged up. But the good news is God himself in his infinite wisdom understood that humanity was going to need a savior and he was so willing to demonstrate his love towards us that he began as we began uh, because of the Holy Spirit coming upon Mary. He began like we did in the womb as a zygote, as a as an embryo, as, as a human form developing that one day we will grow and be a baby full term then come out and we will be an infant and then he will grow to be a toddler and then he would go through adolescence and puberty he would grow to be a young man and then a grown man he went through the stages of physical and emotional and spiritual development just as we have and he's doing it so he can be known as 
as a savior who is acquainted with our griefs and our sorrows. There's nothing that you have been tempted with that he was not tempted with. There's no issue or no circumstance that you are facing that he did not face so that he will prove to you that you can stand under the tyranny and the oppression of those that seek to do you harm, that you can stand in the midst of trouble realizing God will never leave you nor forsake you. He sends us, God with us, Jesus Christ our Lord, Emmanuel, he sends him that we might recognize his love towards us and give us hope. What is this hope? It was promised in Genesis to get this old low-down serpent has gotten his way, but I'm going to send one that's going to bruise the head of that serpent. Oh, he'll bruise his heel, but he's going to bruise the head. And I'm glad to report today that, that though it didn't happen quickly, it happened in God's time. He sends Jesus Christ that he might fulfill all of the messianic prophecies, that all of the signs will point to him as the true and living Savior of the world. He does this on one blessed night where there was a star that appeared, that there were shepherds in the field watching their flock. There were angels angels going out letting it be known that there is a savior that is born and let me let you know Christians we are cheapening the Christian experience of Christmas because we ourselves have fallen into the commercialism of Christmas and we are more about what happens outside and what seems to be happening aesthetically than intrinsically that needs to be a change on the inside that will manifest on the outside many of us are good at fronting on the outside but on the inside we are struggling, we are going through, we are still trying to reach that elusive joy and peace and hope and love that is associated with God. And it is because many of us have not surrendered totally our lives to him. Or we'll give him some Sunday of our life. We'll shoot him an hour on Sunday. But come Sunday night, we done forgot that it was the Lord that brought us. We'll wake up Monday morning dreading to go to a job that God has blessed us with. We will spend all that week complaining about where we are and what we're doing, forgetting that God has preordained and predestined you for such a time as this. And while you're focused on the negative, you ought to be letting your light so shine before men that they might see your good work, but glorify your Father in heaven. Many of us are disconnected from God during the week, and it's like your phone when you see it getting to one percent all of a sudden you ready to run and charge it because you want to make sure you can keep doing what you're doing but when you have proper preparation you will find out that if you keep your battery charger around thank be to god for my wife my phone was always going out she said okay i got something for you i'm gonna give you something that's portable you can take with you and when you see it getting around 50 percent you need to start charging your phone. Um, some of y'all wait till Sunday, but, but if you hide the word in your heart, then there'll be some things that go on in your life and you'll be able to recharge your own battery. You don't got to wait for Pastor Durant to preach. You, you don't have to go and find a preacher online. You, you don't have to wait for Reverend Rafer to encourage you or Reverend Cook to encourage you. You will know how to encourage yourself. You will speak affirmation words over yourself. You will speak to that devil and let him know that you can't do nothing that God don't allow. And if God allows it, he don't put more on me that I can bear. Evidently I'd have been promoted. You want to know when you've been promoted? When devils in hell began to come against you. Whether it's on your job or against your family, against your peace of mind. You want to know when you're in the right place? When your enemies began to encamp it all around you. You ought to look up towards heaven and be reminded of what David said. He prepares a table in the presence of my enemy. Don't look at me with that tone of voice. 
You know what I'm talking about. It's some people on your job say you didn't deserve a promotion. That there's somebody say you didn't deserve that husband or that wife. Somebody said you shouldn't overcome that illness or that addiction. Somebody said you ought to still be in the squalors of life because I know what you used to be but I'm so glad that because of the reconciliation the Bible says those of us that have been given a new chance have been given a new life and aren't you glad that God not only reconciles but he also restores I'm here to report today that God knows how to restore you come here Job Job was an upright man doing all that he could he would go and he would offer sacrifice not only for him but for them the crazy children he says I don't know what they doing out my sight but God I know that you are able to behold your eyes in all places so I offer up not only sacrifices for me but for my children but it did not prevent the Satan that we know the enemy for going to God and he asked him a question what are you doing he said I've been going to and fro seeing what I can do he said have you considered by serving Job um, God put Job up for testing and trial um, he, he, he says because I created him I know what he can take but because I created him I know that you can't do anything to him because I'm the only one with the power of life and of death. It doesn't matter what you do to him. The only thing you cannot touch is his soul. He says, I tell you what, the minute I take his tangible stuff, he'll spit at you. He'll curse you in your face. He says, as you do, go ahead and do. And we know the story. Job loses his home. He loses his children. He he loses his finance and now sickness has climbed up and climbed in the bed with him and his body is racking with boils he's sitting in the dirt plucking the boils and scraping them with a broken pot I'm telling you he was in a situation but one thing he never did was curse the Lord even when his wife who did not die shows up as he's having counsel with his three friends she say why don't you just curse God and go on ahead and die he say you sound like a foolish woman there's somebody in your life that'll tell you stop going to church stop praying stop reading your Bible. It seems like the more that you do, the worse that it gets. I want to help somebody. When you read the story of Job, Job comes to this conclusion. Naked I came into this world and naked I'm going to leave. So blessed be the name of the Lord. I think one or two of you ought to come to that conclusion. You ought to be able to look and say, well I came here with nothing and I'm going to leave here with nothing but still blessed be the name of the Lord. Why would I bless the name of the Lord? Because he's Jehovah Rapha. He's the God of my healing. He's Jehovah Nisi, the God of my victory. He's my banner. He is all that I need and that's why I bless his holy name. That's why when that baby was born and they called him Emmanuel because he is God with us. I'm glad that he called him Yahshua, Jesus. Jesus meaning salvation. It's because he bought my pardon that I'm able to live and be restored to right standing with God. Listen, he not only reconciled and restored, but he also gives us resurrection. The scripture plainly lets us know it is through his blood that we were reconciled, able to experience the newness of life through Christ. And many of us are still living in a new life with old ways. But you can't put new wine in old wine skins. Some, somebody needs to know that today. You, you cannot live a new life in living in your old ways. If you really want to experience what God has for you, you're going to have to shed all that old stuff and take on the new life. For those old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Well, what has become new? Thank God for a new heart. 
I used to have a heart that was stone. I, I wanted it my way. And if you did something to me, I'm going to do it to you, not once, but twice, because you're not going to have the upper hand on me. I was unforgiving. I was mean. I was arrogant. I was foolish. I was just a low down wretch. But I'm so glad that when I experienced the newness of God, that he took my heart of stone and he turns it into a heart of flesh. And now I have compassion for those, especially for those that are ignorant, those that don't know what to do and how to do. My heart bleeds for them, recognizing that there's a God who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly more than we can ask a thing. When I realized that God plucked me and saved me, he didn't only change my heart, but he changed my mind. Be ye not conformed to the ways of the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm so glad that God changed my mind that this mind that I have is the one that's in Christ Jesus. It taught me how to humble myself. It, it taught me how to give my life to him. It taught me how not to focus on what other people are doing, but what can I do to serve him better? It's changed my focus from being on me to being on him. And when you look to him and him alone, you recognize that he will give you the assured victory if you just hold on and have a little faith. Faith. That's what I like about faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for and it's the evidence of things not seen and that's why I'm glad for the gift of hope that I don't have to see it to have a confident expectation that God is going to bring it through. I don't know who I'm talking to today but don't give up right where you are. Whatever's going on God will take care of you. Every time I turn around, he keeps on making a way. Is there anybody in here that knows God will make a way? He'll make a way for you and he'll make a way for me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. And God himself reached beyond time and he plucked me out of the muck and mire of life. He put me on a rock called Jesus. And now I can stand, let the winds blow, let the rains fall, let the floods rise, but I know I'm planted on a rock, and I'm so glad that trouble don't last always, because I know that one day I'm going to stand in his presence, I'm going to behold his face and see him for myself. I love my grandmothers, but I don't want to see them first. I love my grandfathers, but I don't want to see them first. I done had some friends to die, but I don't want to see them first. When I get to heaven, I want to see the one who was born in a manger. I want to see the one who fulfilled all the prophecies. I want to see the one who still turns water in the wine and can still walk on the water. I want to see the one who can heal all manner of diseases. I want to see the one who was willing to lay down his life. I want to see the one that was nailed to that old rugged cross. I want to behold the one that they put a crown of thorns on his head. I want to behold the one that was pierced in his side till blood and water came running out. I want to see the one that they call the rock of ages that they put in a rock and tried to hide with a rock. But three days later, that rock moved the rock and stepped out of the rock and became my rock, my rock in a weary land. I feel good right here because God has been so good to me. He's been better than me than I've been to myself. I know I got two or three people and I'll make four that don't mind telling the Lord thank you. You ought to look at a neighbor right now and say you got the gift of hope. You got the gift of hope. And even though it seems hard right now, God will take care of you. Won't he take care of you? If you're hungry, he'll be your bread. If you're thirsty, he'll be your water. When you don't know what to do, he's a way out of no way. I'm so glad 
that God can do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ask a thing. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, what good things the Lord has in store for all of us who believe in him. You ought to celebrate with me. Somebody say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. He's all right. He's all right. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. The gift, the gift of hope gave us reconciliation, restoration, and then resurrection. One of these days, when this life is over, God has a prepared place for a prepared people. Let us live our life with that assured victory. Why are the Christians walking around scared, heads hung down, hunched over shoulders, like we are living in a perpetual state of sadness and despair. When God has performed the greatest work ever seen in human history, when he clothed himself in flesh, was born like us, struggled like us, lived like us, he was a homeless man, didn't even have a place to call his own home. Birds have nests. Foxes have holes, but the son of man don't even have a place to lay his head. And there you are complaining about the house you have, complaining about the creature comforts of life. And here he is, stripped himself of glory so that we could know God for ourselves. Then he do a strange thing after that. So I'm going to get up out of here. But I'm not going to leave you by yourself. Church, we cannot discredit the third person of the triune God here, which is the Holy Spirit. Jesus is on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us now, preparing a place for us. But he gave us his Holy Spirit so that we will have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That, that he will teach us, guide us. He will give us the wisdom and the discernment we need in the time we need it. Many of us worry about stuff that we don't even have to think about. We worry about so much stuff that never even happened. Some of y'all gave yourself counsel before the doctor told you what the deal was. Yeah, I think it might be some counsel. I'm going to the doctor. The doctor says counsel? Nah, but you know I had a test. The power of life or death is in your tongue. Everybody that got sick during this pandemic, oh, they must got COVID. No, everybody ain't got COVID. Because we are so quick to make life bigger than God. If you make God bigger than life, then whatever comes your way. I got, hold on, stay right, don't move. I'll be right back. And go talk to God about it. That supervisor that be coming after you, you ain't gotta be nasty and doing a, I, you, you so right. And you go right to God in prayer. Now, Lord, you know me. They might not know me, but you know me. I need you to help me before I help them help them. Every argument in your household, every battle ain't worth it. Some marriages, weeks and weeks, you don't want to talk to each other over some small, insignificant nothing. 
and a give up years of love, dedication, service, and commitment over a mistake or over somebody speaking out of turn. And instead of having the forgiveness that God gave us, that in spite of ourselves being Gentiles, out of the covenant of Israel, he still grafted us in because he wanted to save us too. And if you can't demonstrate love with the one that lays in the bed with you, who will take care of you when, Lord have mercy. If you can't do that, then you don't love yourself. In the church, we brothers and sisters, and all of us got weaknesses and vulnerabilities and fragilities and faults. I'm not about to be up here spotlighting you to make you feel like you worse than you are. The truth is we all know that we falling short, but we here to be encouraged and taught so that we can live better today than we did on yesterday. I want to highlight what God is able to do, not what I've been doing. I like that. That's why you so lame. Many of us have no upward mobility because we're still looking back and we're still looking down. The Bible says, look to the hills from which cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord which made the heaven and earth. On today, you can receive this gift of hope, Jesus Christ our Lord, by accepting him as your Lord and Savior. You need a Savior, first of all, because you're on your way to hell if you have not accepted him. I don't care how quote unquote good you are and I don't never want to hurt nobody. I be wanting to do the right thing. I don't care how much you want to do in your own power. You are powerless against Satan and the enemy without God on your side. Because he will fight your battles. He will step in on time. Matter of fact, you don't even know the breadth and the depth of your own life. Lord, teach me to number my days. That I might apply my heart to wisdom on the day you have a chance to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. The greatest gift you can ever receive is not that Rolex watch, it's not a new car, new house, it's not that the, your Gucci and your Louis and your Toy Birds. All that's cool. I like it. It's cool. But those things are going to fade away. But when you accept Jesus Christ, for what would it profit a man? to gain the whole world and lose his soul. Today, we are asking you today that you would accept Jesus Christ before it's everlasting too late. And then some of you have accepted Jesus, but you ain't doing no work. You're not doing your part. No, no, you're not doing your part. You, you getting by and sliding by. You, you happy that you go be in heaven, but you go go to heaven and you're not going to receive none of the rewards associated with being faithful and trustworthy. You're going to be saved. But, but like one preacher say, you're going to be broken heaven. As a pastor, I'm going to tell you what I'm working on. The Bible says that there's laid up for me an imperishable crown that will never fade away. I'm going to tell you right now, I got my eye on a prize. It's not just my soul being saved. This thing comes with some incentives. Thank God for Sister Queedy Emanuel. We talk often and she always say, Pastor, I don't care what temptation come, I'm not going to break my covenant with God. Now, I done got too old to break my covenant with God. It, it be some tempting stuff out there. It's, the old Queedy want to come up sometime, but I remember my covenant with God and I remember his covenant with me. And if God is going to be faithful to me, I'm going to be faithful to God. Today, some of you have backslidden. You have regressed in your walk with God. You're not praying like you should. You're not reading your Bible like you should. You're not meditating like you should. You, you living on grandmother prayers and great-grandmother prayers, but it's time for you to start having your own prayers. It's time for you to start praying for the next generation. It, it's time for you to step up and stop hiding in the shadows because in the shadows, there is no accountability and responsibility. You're going to have to step up to the forefront and take your rightful position that God has given you to live a life before him, acceptable in his sight. Holy, be ye holy, for I am holy. This is my appeal to someone who is backslidden. Turn, repent, come on back to where God would have you be. Then some of you are just out here just floating. Y'all go to everybody's church and still haven't put yourself anywhere. 
You, you need to find your place to put your roots so that you can learn, develop a fellowship with those around you and begin to maturate so that you can be an effective kingdom builder, an effective ambassador. This is an important time for me. Because church, it's not about just us coming in here. If we're not helping somebody get here with us, if we're not calling and causing someone to come, then we haven't done our job. God is gonna stand and give an account to us. He's going to show us what he's told us to do and then he's going to show us what we did. Amen. Some of us are squandering some opportunities. The harvest is plentiful. It's the laborers that are few. He said, don't, he didn't say pray for the harvest. He said pray for the laborers. That's why every day at 12 o'clock I make sure we come together as a church and we pray for the laborers. So as we continue to grow and develop, come on my brother, my sister, amen. As we come, it is our hope that we will grow in grace for his grace is sufficient for all of us. Let us not hesitate to make sure that we are doing our part. Amen. God bless each and every one of you and those of you who are watching online. We pray today that God is blessing you right where you are. And when you have an opportunity, don't just stay at home because you're not staying at home on Saturdays. You're not staying at home on Friday nights. But on Sunday morning, if God has blessed you, you ought to make it to a house of worship and come into the fellowship and worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Someone give the Lord a hand clap of praise and acknowledgement for all that he has done. Amen. Amen. At this time, we want you to prepare your heart and your mind to give an offering. Amen. It's offering time. Amen. When you mature and when you grow, you began to realize that God himself will bless you. That whatever you give him, God not going to allow you to beat him giving. No matter what you give him, God has a way of giving back to you that and some. Oh, y'all didn't know. I didn't finish. The end of Job's story goes like this. He received double for his trouble. Everything that he had in the beginning and lost, God restored to him double. And I don't know about you, but all that the enemy has taken and destroyed in my life, I look forward with hope and anticipation that God will give me double for my trouble. If you believe, if you truly understand how planting seed and sowing seed really work, if you've ever grown anything in your life, I mean, went and got some seeds and planted them and watched them grow, you know it doesn't take an overnight to, for it to happen. But if you keep on watering it and you keep on putting it in the right conditions, that God himself will give you the increase. When you give to God, you say, God, I thank you. And Lord, I'm not worried about anything knowing that as I plant and as I sow, you yourself are a reward of the faith. I pray today over your gifts that whatever you give, you give cheerfully and from your heart. And those of you who give sacrificially from your lack, that God will bless you some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Let us remember this church is our stewardship. Whatever we don't have is because we haven't supplied. We haven't trusted God to supply. This is our house, what God has blessed us with. And look at how beautiful it is. Look at what he's permitted us to have. Let us remember our stewardship to these things of God. I remember he said it like this. You are in your sealed up houses, and my house lay desolate or in waste. Let us not that be the testimony of Cashmere Garden. We want to make sure that his house that have been established as a place of worship has everything it needs. It's offering time. It's offering time. Worship through giving. Luke 6 and 38 says, 
Give, and it shall be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. Text KGMBC to 77977 or KGMBC app to 77977. Visit www.cashmeregardensmbc.org. For Zell, payee is kgmbcfinance at gmail.com. For Cash App, hashtag Cashmere Gardens MBC. To send a love offering to our pastor, hashtag Pastor ELD. Our mailing address, 4302 Cavalcade Street, Houston, Texas, 77026. Stay connected. As we prepare to dismiss, I pray that this holiday season that you focus on that gift, Jesus Christ our Lord, and that you show your appreciation by focusing on him and not merely gifts and fellowship, but truly on the gift that keeps on giving. Amen. Amen. Let us bow. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of hope that brought us our reconciliation, our restoration, and then our resurrection. Thank you, God, for we know every good and perfect gift comes from you. So, God, on today, um, as we live, leave out with this message of the gift of hope, let us share it with others. Not only that, God, let us prove our love for you by living unto you according to your word. We pray on today, God, for strength for those of us that are weak. Praying, oh God, that we will allow the love of you to irradiate and shine through our life. Not only in what we say, but more importantly, in what we do. Lord, I love this people so much, God. I just pray today that you would give them your divine favor. Lord, I ask that you would anoint each and every one under the sound of my voice. That, God, you would just create in us clean hearts and renew right spirits within us. I pray, God, that you just get the glory from each and every one of our lives. Lord, it is our true desire to live unto you according to your word. So, God creating us, help us become what you would have us be, that God in due season we might hear good and faithful servant, job well done. And so Lord, on today, as we leave this place but never your presence, we pray God for your divine blessing and your divine care be with us. Now may the grace of God, the love of Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, may it rule, may it abide with us now and forevermore. And we all agreed by saying, amen. Do me a favor and look at your neighbor and say, I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it, but love me back. And what do we say here at Cashmere? A better me makes a better us. I love you. Go in peace. We thank you for worshiping with us here in the garden, here in the garden. Until we meet, until we meet again. We will be praying for you. Right.